What is going on guys welcome back in this video i want to introduce you to jupyter lab which is a powerful alternative to jupyter notebooks it is a more sophisticated development environment with a bunch of more features and it's a very very interesting tool so let us get right into it All right, so for this video, I want to keep it kind of casual. I just want to show you around Jupyter Lab a little bit. I want to show you the features. I want to show you what you can do with it, what you cannot do with it. I myself have just started using Jupyter Lab recently instead of Jupyter Notebooks, instead of ordinary Jupyter Notebooks. And I'm very impressed by it. I think it has a ton of interesting features. It is a very powerful development environment for data science, for machine learning. And I think it can be very interesting for those of you guys, especially who are already using IPython notebooks and Jupyter notebooks on a regular basis, because Jupyter Lab offers a more sophisticated environment like RStudio maybe for R, but I think it's, I personally think it's better than RStudio because first of all, I'm not a big R fan, but also it offers the Jupyter notebook environment, which is a big advantage in my opinion. So let's get started. We're going to start by opening up a command line and installing Jupyter lab like this. And once we have that, we can navigate to the directory that we want to be working in. In my case, this is this one here. And then I type Jupyter space lab like Jupyter notebook, but instead of notebook, we type lab, and this will open up the Jupyter lab in the browser. Now Jupyter lab is also available as a desktop client as a desktop application, if you prefer that, but I'm going to show you uh, I'm going to make this tutorial in the browser here. So what you see here is immediately the dashboard, we can create uh, a new Jupyter Python notebook, we can open up a Python console, we can uh, open up an ordinary terminal, a text file, a markdown file, a Python file. Uh, and we can also open up different um, data types here. So for example, I have a CSV file here, you can see I can open this in Jupyter lab with uh, an Excel like uh, view, I cannot really do anything here, but we can select individual fields. Um, and look at this, like ordinary CSV file, but not not as a text file, but as a table. Uh, I can also open up a PDF file here. So you can see, it opens this PDF file inside of Jupyter lab here. Um, and we can of course, also open up a new Jupyter notebook. And for those of you who are interested, you can also use R and Julia with Jupyter lab and with Jupyter notebooks, obviously, but since I'm not coding in either of those two languages, I'm not really familiar with how to do that. But just keep in mind, if you are an R programmer or a Julia programmer, you can also use Jupyter lab for those languages. So this is an ordinary Python notebook here an IPython notebook, we can do the usual stuff like a equals 10 b equals 20 in one cell, then print a plus b independently in another cell. And then I can change stuff here and execute that cell again, and we get a different result, ordinary stuff. Now, one thing that we can do here in Jupyter lab, I'm not even sure if Jupyter notebooks support that feature, maybe they do, maybe not. But we can drag around cells. So we can move cells here, however we want, right, like that, uh, which is kind of cool. And what we can also do is we can collapse cells. So sometimes we have cells that have uh, a lot of lines of code, and they're annoying because they're so huge. Uh, what we can do is we can collapse those cells by clicking uh, on the blue bar here. Also, one thing that you notice probably is when I change something, and I don't execute the cell, you can see that this cell stays orange, and it has a dot here. So unless I execute it, this will uh, stay the same. So this is, um, this is one nice feature that we don't have in Jupyter notebooks. Uh, I think in Jupyter notebooks, we only have in ordinary Jupyter notebooks, we only have uh, a star symbol or something like that. Uh, but yeah, that's that. What we can also do, and this is uh, a very interesting uh, feature, in my opinion, is we can uh, create a special view for an individual cell output. So let's just delete this real quick. If I have some cell here that prints, hello world. And I have maybe another cell that prints 10 plus 20. And then I have a last cell that prints, I don't know, hello view, I can create a new view for one particular cell. For example, I can right click this one here, and click on create new view for output, then I get this output view here. And whenever I change something here, and I print, uh, for example, hello, something else, 
you can see that the output view changes. But this is not a general output view. So this is not just an output view that shows us the output of any uh, of any cell. For example, if I change something here, if I change this to 30, and I execute this, this becomes 40. But this is still the output view. So this output view is focused on this particular cell here. Uh, even if I move it doesn't really matter. Whatever I change, uh, whatever I do, it updates here in the output view. So this view is connected to that cell. And I will always have it open uh, at the bottom, it will always update whatever this cell is doing. Um, and I can also use this, of course, for plots. So I can also use this for matplotlib, I can go ahead and say import numpy snp and also import matplotlib.pyplot splt. And then I can say x equals random, uh, not random, np random, random, 100, y equals np random, random 100, plt dot uh, scatter x, y. And then I get this graph here and I can right click it and press create new view for output. And then I can get it to the right side. And then you can see that I have this output, even if I do something else here, print Hello. And if I write some code down here, it doesn't really matter. I always have this graph open. So I can do that. I don't have to open the full notebook in another tab, I can just right click this output and then work and look at it if I want to. I can of course also copy this here down here, create another one where I say I don't know, two times x plus and p random normal distribution with one 0.5 100, for example, and we get this plot, I can right click this one as well, get the output view. And then I have two output views, I can zoom out a little bit. And then I can keep coding. And I still have these graphs if they are important for me, or if this is a pandas data frame, or if this is an important message that I have to look at, I don't have to constantly scroll up to look at it again, I don't have to constantly uh, have a second uh, tap with the same notebook open, I don't have to make screenshots, I can just use this output view. Uh, which is very convenient, right? So another thing that we can do is we can copy cells into other notebooks by just dragging them into a new notebook. So I can right click here, uh, or actually, do I have to do it like that? I can open up a new Python notebook. And here I don't have a cell, I can open this in split view here. And now I can just take this cell here and drag it over here. And it's now copied into this second notebook. And those notebooks are running on different kernels. So for example, if I define a variable, a equals 90 here, and I try to access this here. So if, if I say print a, it's not going to know a because this notebook is running on a separate kernel, which brings me to the next point, you can attach a console to the respective kernel. So I can just right click here, and say new console for notebook. And now I have here a Python console that is connected to the same kernel as this particular notebook. So I can go ahead, for example, and say, my var equals 100. I can execute that it's executed down here in the command line. And now I can go here and print my var. <clears throat> and you can see that this works. So whatever I do here affects this here. And whatever I do here also affects the command line. So if I say, for example, test equals 200, and I say test, you can see that this works here as well, it doesn't work in this notebook, right? So if I say test here, this does not work. Also, if I say my var, this does not work because this notebook is running separately. By the way, let me just quickly see if my camera is not too big. There you go. So those are two separate kernels, of course, I can also right click and say new console for notebook. Now I have one here as well. And I can, um, you know, do stuff if I want to here. So I can say test two equals 100. Then I have test two here. But I don't have obviously test two here, right? So that's the basic idea of that. Um, what we also have, and this is not related to the notebooks, what we also have is we can create markdown files inside of this notebook. So I can just create a markdown file here. And I can start writing, I can say, okay, heading one, what is going on? This is and then bold, whatever. 
So you can see that markdown does certain things. It highlights that this is a heading, it highlights that this is bold. And I can of course also write some Python code here, like print hello world. And then three backticks to end the code section, whatever, right? But we don't see a preview of that. So we would have to render this. But what we can do now is we can right click and say show markdown preview. And you can see now we have the preview of the markdown and this does not have to be executed every time I don't have to click every time to see the preview, I can just keep going here. And say, for example, other heading, this is more text. And when I pause typing, you can see it automatically shows me the preview of what this is going to look like. And now we get to a feature that is, in my opinion, very fascinating, we can now use this markdown file to run Python code, we can right click, we can create a console for this editor, I can run this kernel here, I Python kernel um, for Python 3.9. And now what I can do is I can just go to that Python section here, this is just markdown, this is not even a code file, but I have a code section in it. And I can just press shift enter to execute that line of code here um, in the in the console down below, right? So I can do something like a equals 10 b equals 20 print a plus b. And now I have this code here in the mark markdown, which is nothing uh, fancy, I can just use that. Uh, but then I can also go ahead and just shift enter um, and execute the code. Now I'm not sure if we can execute individual lines. Yeah, we can if we highlight them, we can execute also the individual lines, or we can just click here and execute the full uh, block of code. And of course, everything I do is related to the kernel. So for example, if I say b equals 70 now, down here, and I only execute that print statement, you can see that now it adds 10 to 70. Because uh, yeah, it's 70 now and not 20, because we didn't execute that line. So this works um, quite well, what else can we do here? We can do the same thing in Python files. So I can close all of this here. And I can just create an ordinary Python file, which is not an IPython file, just an ordinary Python file. And I can say here, for example, a equals 10, b equals 20, print a plus b. And then down here, I can say b equals 30, for example. And now what I can do is I can right click create console for editor IPy kernel, and then I can just execute the individual lines, shift, enter, shift, enter, shift, enter, there you go. Now I can also execute this one here, shift, enter, and then shift, enter this one. Now I can see 10 plus 30 is 40. So this works as well. And that's actually all I wanted to show you here. Now there are a ton of more features probably that we can look at here. But this is just a general introduction into Jupyter lab, I just want to show you what you can do with that. Because it has this feeling of R studio, if you have ever used R studio before where you have the plot in a separate section where you have the code in a separate section, you have um, maybe a CSV file opened up and all that. <clears throat> so this is actually uh, a very useful thing, a very useful environment. And it's just more convenient than using a plain Jupyter notebook without all these features. So if you're doing data science work on a regular basis, this can be uh, very helpful to you. As I mentioned already, you also have a desktop app that you can use if you don't want to use this in the browser. And I also saw I don't have it installed yet, maybe I'm going to make a tutorial on this once I figured out how to do it. You also can add Vim bindings via a plugin, I think the same way you can do that with ordinary Jupyter notebooks. So this is definitely something I'm going to do over time. Uh, but yeah, this is the Jupyter lab environment. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.